Welcome to The People's View, a program dedicated to discussing local, state, and national issues and their effect on the American people. The People's View provides a platform for state representatives and national figures to present their viewpoint. Whether it's social, economic, or financial topics, you'll hear it on The People's View. Hello, this is Carl Seidel, and this is The People's View. People's View is sponsored by the Nashua Republican City Committee, and if you want to find out more about us, just uh, go to our website, nashuagop.org, and you'll find out about our events and the speakers we have at our meetings, which is on the second Thursday of every month. Tonight, we have Dan Moriarty. He is the ultimate in World Nine. And Dan, welcome aboard, and tell us about what's uh, high on your agenda for the Board of Ultimate. Um, well, there's a few things, but there's one topic I wouldn't mind talking about, if okay. I may. Well, I, hear that I heard you before. It's something to do with uh, public access TV and all the public access channels. That's right. Uh, in general, I'm a fan of public access TV, uh, but uh, there's, let me give you some background. Back in September, maybe it was October, we were the, in the uh, Board of Aldermen, we had the budget review, and one of the line items was public access and whether the question came up whether we should you know, increase or decrease it. And so I asked the question about, uh, if, uh, asked the question to the, to the board president for clarification mm -hmm. on how it's funded through the, the franchise fee. And uh, the comment came back, um, the, at the moment there's a 4% franchise fee. Mm -hmm. we, we get 4% of the, rev the gross revenues from Comcast and that money's divvied out amongst three channels, p the PEG channels, uh, public, educational government and right now the public access is funded out of the general fund mm -hmm. and the educational government's funded out of the the, uh, the special revenue so the comment that the board president said was if we reduce the funding to public access channel your taxes will go down so that statement is true um, based on how it's set up now mm -hmm. so I did some research and I learned uh, by reading some uh, some of the, f the federal laws that established all this. Because the existence of public access TV, our taxes have already gone down about a million dollars. So, so we have two statements: if you reduce funding to public access TV, your taxes will go down. Yeah. But because the existence of public access TV, your taxes have already gone down a million dollars. How can those both be true at the same time? Right. Right. So. But now you're saying that the public access channel gets its money from the general budget instead of the money that comes directly from Comcast. Correct. So let's dig, so let's dig a little bit deeper. So what I, I went through the, the budget and summarized a couple of things. Mm -hmm. So revenues, uh, general fund department, 499 miscellaneous. Item 179, cable TV franchise. So the general fund revenues, there's a cable TV franchise that brings in $790,000 budget for 2013. Okay, then there's a special, the city special revenue fund for government and educational channels brings in $286,000 for a total of a million. And plus there's an accumulated earnings and surplus for a grand total of $1.2 million. So revenues, the franchise fee brings in $1.28 million. That's a nice sum. Okay, it's a pretty decent amount. Mm -hmm. So how much are we spending, you would ask. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Dan, how much are we spending? Uh, Appropriations, general fund appropriated, Department of 505, civic and community activities, line 81038, public access channel. Appropriations, public access channel, $85,000. I know that was less than 100. I, I, I know there's not very much being spent, but we're, right. having a good, we're getting a good bang for our buck, though. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're doing a good job. But that's, that's a general fund. City special revenue fund appropriations, government and educational channels. Payroll, two full-time staff, capital improvements, et cetera, et cetera, $497,000. So there's $250,000 that went into capital improvements. That was audiovisual mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the Hall Auditorium and in Aldermanic Chamber. But essentially, the general fund pays $85,000 to, to public access, and then the special revenue fund pays another half a million to government and educational. But we're bringing in $1.28 million. 
Where does that go? Where's the rest of it go? <laughs> so $700,000 is in the general fund reducing taxes. So, so there we are. The, this whole PEG brings in money. We don't mm -hmm. spend it all. Mm -hmm. Your taxes have gone down. Yeah. And the way it's set up, the special revenue does one thing. The general fund is the public access. Okay. So where did all this start? So I did some research. Public Law 98-549, 1984, uh, known as the Cable Communications Policy Act of 1984. Okay, so the, this Cable Act, the law says a franchising authority, which is Nashua, so that, th this law uh, was established by Congress back in 1984 that created, uh, that gave the, the, the municipalities mm -hmm. the authority to to uh, solicit uh, proposals mm -hmm. for the cable franchise. And it gave us the authority to impose certain law, uh, uh, restrictions on them and mm -hmm. certain things. So what it did is it said that we can establish, that's the law that gave the city of Nashua the authority to force Comcast to provide PEG, pr uh, public access educational and government channels. It said that we have the authority to enforce these rules, and it also says that the cable operator cannot edit the con content, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. interestingly enough. So why did they do that? And they say in there, the widest possible diversity of information sources are made available to the public from cable systems. Okay. And also part of that law, uh, to f so the, the, the law says that we can require these, these channels that, mm -hmm. that exist. Mm -hmm. We can solicit proposals from everybody, so the Comcast... It's a regulated monopoly, but it also says to fund it that it gave us the authority to charge as much as 5% of the gross revenues. Really? Okay. Okay. So that's 1984. Uh-huh. So, but still we know that we're not taking in 5%. No. It's not all going towards public access. So what has happened? So we go back to the Special Board of Aldermen, August 29th, 2005. And I have here, we have... Uh, these are the Special Board of Aldermen, the meeting the, the minutes. And of course, uh, back in the olden days, they weren't all online, they're all typed up. It was interesting, because you look at the names in here. President McCarthy, Alderman Bolton, LaRose, Her Larry Hirsch was there talking. We have uh, David Dean was the Alderman. We have- People uh, have been there a few years. Huh? Some people have been around a while, yeah. And uh, so I'll give you a quick summary of what okay. happened then. Um, so here we are. So uh, we would. I mean, Nashua took a long time before it set up its public access channel relative to the other cities and towns around. Isn't that uh, correct? Yes, that is true. Um, a few. Th I had a conversation with someone who used to be on the CTAB, mm -hmm. and he was saying, uh, way back when we, way, you know, '84 uh, was when they, we had the authority to do it. We didn't. We didn't have it then. Some of the considerations were when we're negotiating with Comcast, we chose to have to insist that they uh, expand their internet service. So we wanted them to spend mm -hmm. money on improving the infrastructure to provide internet service and other facilities mm -hmm. and broadband mm -hmm. to everybody. And so we gave up some of our, our uh, it was just negotiating. Another one was, I think there was a channel 13. Yes. And Channel 13 was going to provide some of the mm -hmm. shows at, mm -hmm. like yours. And they did do some interviewing, and yeah. now it's, uh, those people are now working at Channel 50. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. And so the, the CTAB, CTAB is uh, the a Cable Television Advisory Board. Mm -hmm. So they, they decided amongst themselves that they didn't think they wanted to compete with Channel. They wanted to give Channel 13 a chance to, to succeed. Mm -hmm. And they said, why? You know, if the Channel 13 is going to do it, we don't need to have a redundant public access. So, so it's, that's why it's sort of one of the reasons why it took a while. But here we are in 2005, and the question uh, uh, comes up. Um, Alderman Dean asks, were the CTAB members that were involved in the negotiating team where they kept apprised of the ongoing, ongoing negotiations with Comcast and Larry Hirsch? No, it was at that point in time. It was kept within that small group. So there was the, there was a uh, there was a small group within CTAB that was doing the actual negotiations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, but then uh, Alderman Dean asked, "I realized there was a negotiation process that was used through this contract, but we have an aldermanic liaison, which is Alderman Johnson." So 
Um, um, and so the, the, we have it, there was a liaison, but the, it, prior to Alderman Johnson coming on, Alderman McCarthy was the liaison, and so because the negotiations had already been going on, he continued to be the liaison, so they, she didn't, wasn't doing the communications with the negotiating team McCarthy was. Oh, okay. Um, everything was going slow, though, pretty slow. Everything slowly. was going pretty slowly, and it, was, it took many years. Um, but then the, when they came back to the board to say, here's our proposal, there was a, a hubbub about the fact that there was no public channel, yeah. even 2005. And so the people here are saying, can we add the public TV uh, channel? And, and so one of the responses was, if you don't pass it tonight, we have to go back and renegotiate. We don't have time because we're running out of time and they, we need to close the deal. And if we renegotiate, then they might renege. Well, that was, uh, <laughs> you, you dug up a lot of different information because right. I know at that time uh, I and a few other people were trying to get uh, some kind of exposures to some of the political dialogues that were going on. Right. Uh, we tried to hold a forum and they allowed us at one time to use the government channel to record that kind of a debate or we had uh, uh, people who were running, candidates who were running for office. Uh, we had a Republican Democrat thing that we ran at the high school, but it was always on that channel, and uh, it wasn't yeah. the public access channel. We had really very little control over it uh, as far as timing or or when we could do it or what format we used. And uh, we were we were hearing more and more about towns like Manchester, uh, Goffstown, uh, Bedford that were doing it and had very good uh, programs, uh, not only political, but other things. And we, we kept trying to push it. And uh, finally, I guess, what, when this came into existence only two years ago. And uh, yeah. they've done a good job with yeah. very little money. <laughs> That's true. And the questioning continued in that meeting back in 2005, should we add a fourth channel? And yeah. you know, we, don't wanna add, we can't add a fourth channel, can't it share, and et cetera. And you know, as it went on, uh, it turned out that um, the Comcast doesn't really care. They're going to provide us with three channels. Yeah. We can do whatever we want. And so uh, I don't believe that, that the contract has changed from 2005 to now. They, somebody decided, okay, let's take one of those channels which, and turn it into true public mm -hmm. access. Mm -hmm. so, but then we can, and that that's, sort of goes on and on, then we want to move it on. But then the question came up again about the funding of it. And that's when Alderman Mc President McCarthy stepped down so he could speak because it's standard procedure when the, mm -hmm. the board president doesn't, doesn't talk from the, the podium, he goes down. And so he made the comment about uh, there are costs to produce the show. It's even though, you know, the public access gets some funding, you know, you have to pay for a cameraman, you have a camera, et cetera. There's all these costs. Okay, but yeah, there is money in the franchise fee to put to that. That money comes directly out of the cable bill. I didn't make the initial votes to put the 3% in the general fund. It has been that way since apparently the Sullivan administration. So prior to 2005, it was decided to take that 3%. That should have gone to public access and put it in the general mm -hmm. fund. Mm -hmm. uh, and and he he's saying that it wasn't his decision. But nevertheless, they could have changed it and, and done it. But, but they continued, but that's fine. The last thing we did when we passed the budget this year was to cut money out of the police and fire and public works budgets. If you take that franchise money and put it towards the establishment of a public access channel and what it costs to do that, the taxes will go up because it will not be offset by that 3%. You can either let taxes go up, you can increase the franchise fee, which comes directly off the cable bill, and frankly, to me, that is getting to an area I'm not sure we need to be in a public policy standpoint. So Alderman McCarthy says there are costs. Right now, we had to cut the police and fire, and if we put the money in the public access, the poor police and fire aren't going to get any more money. And we're talking about what? Uh how much money total? Uh, five to seven hundred thousand dollars. Okay, that's been so. That's it. Fund. And this is all because of what happened originally, doing yeah. something that wasn't intended to be, by, exactly. according to law. That's right. The law says that you should be delegating that, that five seven hundred thousand dollars right. to these public access channels. Exactly. To, to better inform the public and to uh, give them the opportunity to voice their opinions. Yes. And to, with that, uh, there were a few opportunities for the public to voice their opinions, and there's a, there was a PowerPoint presentation, why not public access channel? Mm -hmm. And one of them, they said that there was little demand and, and et cetera. But, 
So then we keep, we dig a little further. Okay. In 1992, well that actually is before 2005. Right. The question of, so there's still this question which we we'll have to, I'm gonna put you on the spot at some point where we have oh. to decide, should we actually take this money and put it towards public access TV? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The law says we can. Doesn't necessarily, at least the, the, the one I- Doesn't say we have to. Doesn't say you have, it, it doesn't, it's hard to say whether we have to or not, but certainly the one in two, 1984 says we have the authority, and the, they said the reason we have the authority is in order to provide public access TV. So one would think that we should. But you go to 1992, so if that wasn't enough, go to 1992, and it says, the federal government has a substantial interest in making all non-duplicative public television services. Uh, where is this? Well, item six. There is a substantial governmental and First Amendment interest in promoting a diversity of views mm -hmm. provided through multiple technology media. First Amendment. According to the, con the, the Congress who wrote this, there is a substantial governmental and First Amendment interest in ensuring that cable subscribers have access to non-commercial educational mm -hmm. channels in order to information for the nation's citizens, advancing the government's compelling interest in educating its citizens. Uh, so allowing uh, diverse uh, comments to be made by exactly the, the 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 government has invested a community has invested more than three billion dollars in public broadcasting since 1969. Mm -hmm. Absent carriage requirements, there is a substantial likelihood that citizens who have a who have supported local public television services will be deprived of these services. So they they come back and they say, "You have a constitutional right to to." public access TV, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, if, and if we don't go out and make a law enforcing that, you'll have PowerPoint presentations like this that say, people don't want public access TV, therefore let's not pay for it. Yeah. That's well, a strong statement. Well, nobody's suggesting that we don't do the aldermanic or the educational channels, right, the, the, of the Board of Education. Nobody's Nobody suggesting says that. that. But it, just the public access TV, which is only a very small portion of that $700,000. Uh, $700, yes, yeah, uh, exactly. <coughs> well, it's, if we, go, it's, we have 1.28 million brought mm -hmm, in. Mm -hmm. okay. 700,000 goes into the general fund and the rest, and 85,000 goes to uh, public, so, public access. <laughs> we're doing quite well with $85,000, I'll tell you <laughs> that. They do have good equipment, and uh, I know that as far as our show is concerned, we've been... They've been very accommodating, allowing us to take interviews up in Concord as well as uh, here, uh, have the show here taped here regularly. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're you know, very interested. I'm sure some of the other uh, people that have their shows on, which not only are uh, ones about issues, but they have cooking shows, they have uh, right. uh, ed somewhat educational from standpoints of uh, uh, not, uh, the nonprofit organizations telling people what they do and why they do it. Uh, there's a lot of things that are being discussed here. And yeah. uh, I think you're right. Uh, and if you compare us, as I brought up, uh, Manchester has uh, a, a lot of people on their uh, public access channel. Merrimack has them, Goffstown, Bedford, they all have it. And it's grouped too, uh, so that you can pick up uh, other people's, other uh, stations' channels. I mean, public access allows you to get all the uh, programs from any other public access channel in the state. Mm -hmm. There's an archive file that people can pick up, and it's, it is an educational tool as well. Yeah. So, and and uh, I would like to have uh, cameras in Concord mm -hmm. broadcast on, on whether it's public access or, or government TV. Public access is perfectly fine. I'd be willing to uh, make a motion, or first, first step is to encourage the mayor to uh, add more to that line item because she, pro she, she provides the budget to the Board of Aldermen and then we just review it. If we wanted to add money to the line, it would take a two-thirds majority. But anyway, to get that ball rolling now, I'm certainly for it. Um, well, I'll bring it up. We have her yeah. on in a future uh, meeting, yeah, yeah. so we'll talk to her about that. But, but getting back to, so on that, let's ask, should that be the way it is? Now, why do I, as a, as, a, as a citizen, you'd say, oh, the government has a law, and they've talked about how it's a First Amendment mm -hmm. right. You have a constitutional mm -hmm. right to, uh, to public access. But you go back, and who was in charge of Congress back in 1984 and 1992? <laughs> we can look it up and yeah. go see. 
it might not necessarily have been a Republican dominated Congress in 84 and 92. No, well, oh, I, I, I yeah. checked it and one of them it was split. Yeah. 92, I think that's when the, uh, President Clinton came in. Yeah. And it wasn't until 94 that the Republican took over Congress. Yeah. So here we are. It, it could very well. It's, it sounds like a sort of a liberal sort of idea to you know you know power to the people. Of, you know, uh, the first amendment tends yeah. to be you know Democrats, and the second amendment <laughs> tends to be Republican. That's the old joke, you know. Uh, so, it, it, so just because the Congress has said that that's the, well, that is the law. Yeah. Let's put that clear. It is the law. And when we do renegotiate with Comcast, Com if we don't put the money towards public access TV, Comcast could say, they could have a strong argument to say, look, you guys aren't spending the money like you're supposed to, so we refuse to cooperate. Yeah. And then we lose the money anyway. Uh, so no, as I, long as it's law, we might as well do it. Well, I agree with you from that standpoint, but I also think it was wrong in the first place to take it for something that was unintended. And yes. uh, that was not within the law as far as being utilized for general expenses. Certainly, and so we can, as an alderman, I don't have to even answer really the question or address the question, should it be the law or not? It's mm -hmm. law. That's the, it's that's the federal done. government. Yeah. That's the state. You, you have issues up in the state that you deal with, and I have issues in the Board of Aldermen. And, and, and on the Board of Aldermen, uh, we have the authority, we have the strength of these statements that it's a constitutional right to have Republic Access TV. So... So I hope you make a strong case. I we'll look <laughs> forward to seeing it on TV. Sure, yeah. sure. I'll get on government try. TV. What other things are uh, being uh, brought up now at the uh, all the management meetings? Um, that are well, right now the the tonight we have a public hearing about um, um, the two point four million dollar bond that David Dean had put up mm -hmm. uh, proposed in order to. to uh, increased security of the schools. And actually, mm -hmm. I was talking to Chief Susin yesterday. He and I use the same gym, so we bump into each other once in a while. And it's a nice opportunity to, mm -hmm. to, to, to talk. And, and he's for it, and I'm, I'm for it also. So I don't think it's going to be a contentious uh, issue one way or another. It may not necessarily have to be bonded, because the school budget's pretty big, and they were going to pay for it anyway. So that, that's coming up. But what sort of interests me, uh, as we know, it's a City of Nashua's budget is about $250 million, and 55% of that's the school budget. So if you want to be a fiscal conservative, or if you, one way or another, if you want to mm -hmm. focus on, on where the finances is, then the school budget would be one thing you might want to pay attention to. And that process has begun. It started okay. last week. Good. So I attended a meeting, and I talk about this on my Facebook page, and I'm going to try and get a, a, a website that doesn't require you to. Are you a Facebook person? No, I'm not. Yeah, so I need to get a website. <laughs> I can't keep up with the emails, let alone Exactly. Facebook. So if I can get a website for people who don't have Facebook, I'll, yeah. I'll let you know. That's coming soon. But basically, the superintendent, uh -huh. Conrad, um, who I think is doing a great job, uh, he's kind of quiet. He gave a nice long presentation, and he said there were kind of two things that he said. One of them is we're going to lose about a half a million dollars in subsidies from the state and federal government. We might lose a million and a half. Um, it has to do, but anyway, so we're, we're, funding's being cut. Mm -hmm. That's the bad news. The good news is student enrollment has been declining for the past seven years and is projected to decline for the next 10 years. Really? So if everybody in the room, all the Board of, all the, all the, uh, board of Education that was there and a few other people, a few of the administrators, they all got hung up on the fact that we're going to lose a half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And they missed this opportunity to, to focus on the fact that enrollment's going down. Yeah. By contrast, what if enrollment was projected to skyrocket? No. We'd be in bad shape. Mm -hmm. So here's a chance to get our budget under control when the enrollment's going down. So the, there has been a lot of referrals to uh, class sizes. Yeah which actually aren't that big, that high. There's only a few of some I've read in the paper. There's a few outliers yeah. that are high. Yeah. Kindergarten, because it's only been around for a year or two or something, yeah. they're, they're still getting that uh, sh sh settled down. But in high school, our average class size is like 20, yeah. 20 students. And K through five, the average class size is like 20.7. So and it's the junior high that's... Uh, it, well, they're all, no, they're all oh, the, oh. across the board. They're all okay. around in the, tw in the 20 Twice. to 21s. Okay. There are a few individual classes. Yeah. That's average class size. 
because you have, you have 55 students, you have two teachers, that means you've got 27 and a half students per, so you, it's, it's, yeah. you can only have, you, yeah, can't, you can't put, put half three a teacher. In there. Yeah. You yeah. can't put half a teacher in a, in yeah. a class. But the, and some more context for what class sizes are good or bad, the teachers union contract, I believe, says once you go above 28 students per teacher, then you have to pay a, a penalty in the form of a bonus to the teacher. So we're 30% below mm -hmm. a high level in, in Manchester. I mean, you hear about oh, yeah. their averages up like near 30 or something. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's think, so again, one more bit of information. At this meeting, they gave handouts. Mm -hmm. And the handouts were very detailed uh, numbers on all the classes and all the schools and the average size, number of teachers and everything. And there were three options proposed. The focus was on reducing the ratios for kindergarten mm -hmm. and eliminating these 24 to 25 student classes. Redistribute the teachers we have, hire more teachers for kindergarten, or hire more teachers for K through five. Those are three options. There was no option that was reduce okay. staff. And uh -huh. they didn't say take, the take high school, which has a lower average mm -hmm. than the K through five. They didn't say move those, those positions around. So I'm like, hold on here. You're, we're talking about funding's being cut, enrollment's going down, and you're considering hiring more teachers. Okay. Now, I love school. I went to 22nd grade. Okay? <laughs> I can't get enough of it. If I can go back to school, that was some of the best times, and I love yeah. school. So don't get me wrong. I like school. But uh, now's not necessarily the time. Doesn't sound like it. I think that uh, this isn't only going to be locally. This is statewide. I mean, we just don't have the income yeah. to... And you're right, if you have less uh, people to serve or to control in the school, you should be talking about reducing staff and administrative yeah. costs for that matter. Yeah. And, uh, so I suggested sort of, sometimes it's nice to get a perspective instead of your, like when you're negotiating, right. how much you want to pay for this house? So I'm gonna, you really want to pay 300000 but you don't say, you don't offer 300000 yeah. you offer two hundred. So by saying we have an average of around 21 students, the 28 is the limit for the... Uh, mm -hmm. Teachers Union, if we got rid of 33% of our teaching staff, that would put us right at the limit mm -hmm. of the union contract. Right. And we would save the city $30 million. <laughs> $30 million. So you could save, if we okay. cut $30 million out of the school budget, we would be at the point, well, I'm not proposing we actually do that. Mm -hmm. But by contrast, let's not, let's not cut you know, 200 teachers. Let's just keep the staff the way it is. That's a lot better, right? Mm -hmm. Our school, schools will be a lot better than they are in Manchester. They'll continue to be. Or even just a slight cut, a 1% cut. If we had to. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. that's up to the, the Board of Education yeah. to make those decisions. Yeah. No. It's up to the mayor to, to squeeze the budget if she deems Overall, it. the overall number. And then it's up to the Board of Aldermen once we get the budget to decide whether we're going to reduce uh, a line. Well, do you have any clue as to what the mayor's going to submit to for your approval yet? Uh, it's, we just finished. We just approved 2013, like two months ago. So, <laughs> so you're going to be working on that quite a bit then over the next uh, few months. It, you know, it, spins, it, it goes quiet until about April, May, and then the people, the, oh. the poor souls that are on the budget review committee work five days a week uh, for three weeks straight. So we'll have to have you back in April. Is that, is that what you're sure, telling me? Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Are you on the budget committee? I'm not. No, no. <laughs> uh, I know that's, uh, that's terrible. Uh, up in uh, Concord, yeah. the time that those people, the uh, Finance Committee and the Ways and Means Committee, um, had to handle that. Yeah. But, you know, I think the hard work really paid off. As you see, the budget will come out probably with a slight increase, I mean, slight uh, surplus or... Uh, maybe just a slight deficit depending on this medical reimbursement uh, program that, yeah. uh, the, that tax that has to uh, be decided, I guess, by the courts someplace between X and Y, and uh, X is a profit uh, surplus and Y is a deficit, and maybe hopefully it'll come out even. But it came yeah. out pretty close. I was very surprised the hard work they put in on uh, determining what the income would be was pretty darn accurate. I mean, the fraction of right. a percent. So I think you're going to be doing that <laughs> on, the, on, this, on the city uh, budget, I would assume. Yes, and I'm glad you mentioned that because that was one of the reasons why the Board of Education, the, the school budget, 
stands to lose half a million dollars mm. has to do with Medicaid cuts. Mm -hmm. That it's the, you know, back during the campaign season, there were all kinds of attacks both ways. You're cutting Medicaid. No, I'm not. And yes, you are. No, you aren't. Well, here we are no. in January well, and the superintendent comes up and says they're cutting Medicaid or Medicare. Medicare. Cutting Medicare. And so it's going to affect us mm -hmm. at the same time. Well, it's, uh, and they still haven't decided on Medicaid, too. I mean, yeah. they're still working out what the savings is supposed to be by us having more control over it. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be interesting to happen. And we'll see what happens when the governor comes out with their budget, because part of that has to do with how much gets uh, div divvied around to the cities and towns. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be an interesting time. It is. <laughs> it is. Well, it always is. it's been interesting talking about these problems, and as I say, we'll have you back later on and uh, sure. hear your opinion, and uh, maybe we'll find out what uh, Alderman McCarthy has to say about all this, since sure. he's the leader, right? That's right. Okay, very good. And thank you all for listening in today, and uh, come back uh, and uh, look at the uh, program on uh, Channel 96. Uh, and uh, the uh, Nashua Republican City Committee's uh, website, nashuagop.org. Thank you very much for listening.